Hey my friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. If you haven't heard yet, things are changing pretty fast out there in the vehicle market. This right here is getting to be, well, the new normal. And in California by 2035, all new cars will be zero emission vehicles, meaning that you're gonna be plugging one of these into them. And so we're gonna talk really quick about what that means for Californians, what it means for all the people that live in the states that follow them, as well as everyone else. California has always led the way, if not pushed and shoved its way, to a cleaner environment when it comes to smog laws and vehicle emissions policy. In the last year, they have cut through the crowd once again by ruling that all new light cars and trucks sold in the state be zero emission vehicles by 2035. The new California Advanced Clean Cars 2 standards will require that all new cars, SUVs, and light trucks begin a phased-in transition to zero emissions starting in 2026, then when 35% of sales must meet the requirement. Over the following decade, each year it raises the bar until 100% of sales must be zero emission at 2035. This means that by the year 2035, there will be no more brand new conventional internal combustion powered cars, SUVs, and light trucks sold in California, period. Now, a zero emission vehicle as defined by the requirements includes plug-in hybrids, PHEV, full battery electrics, BEV, and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. This means that some gasoline-powered vehicles can still be sold provided they're a plug-in hybrid and have a minimum all-electric range of at least 50 miles. There's a catch, though. The total of plug-in hybrids cannot be more than 20% of the total sales. The remaining 80% of sales must be battery electric or hydrogen fuel. That means they can get away with doing plug-in hybrids for a while, but they can't sell all plug-in hybrids. To meet the rules, battery electric vehicles must have a minimum range of 150 miles. That's a good thing. They must have fast charging capability standard, another good thing, and they must include a charging cord and meet more stringent warranty coverage and battery life requirements than are currently allowed. For instance, a vehicle must maintain at least 80% of its electric range for 10 years or 150,000 miles, and powertrain must be warranted for at least 3 years and 50,000 miles. The latter, most car companies actually exceed that right now. To be clear for those in a panic, existing internal combustion cars and light trucks will still be legal to own and drive and sell in California. Additionally, the sale of used internal combustion vehicles can and will continue even for current model years after 2035. This means that for those who just can't or won't buy a zero emission vehicle, dealers can still bring used internal combustion vehicles in from out of state to sell. You'll still be able to buy them, just not brand new. For those who haul and tow or have a business, don't panic. Medium duty trucks over an 8,500 pound GVWR are not required to meet the 100% zero emission rules. Basically, this means that sales of internal combustion power three quarter ton and heavier pickups will continue to an extent. Medium and heavy duty trucks will be subject to the advanced clean trucks regulation, which requires that only 55% be zero emission by 2035. And there will be more stringent emission standards for the remaining fraction of gas and diesel powered trucks sold. You might say, well, I don't live in California, so who cares what they do? They deserve what they get. This won't affect what I can buy in Kentucky. Well, not so fast. Some 17 states around the country follow and adopt California's emissions rules and are expected to follow these. In total, these 18 states make up about 40% of all U.S. car sales. No matter where you live today, if you look at any new car window sticker, you'll find the line item that says 50 state emissions. This means that while your state might not have the toughest standards, the car companies decided a long time ago that it made the best financial sense to engineer all cars to the test. So even if you do live in Kentucky, your car already meets California standards. Going forward, what California's new regulations are essentially going to mean for everyone is that car companies are making a wholesale move to zero emission vehicles, period. It has never made sense, nor will it ever, to engineer one set of vehicles for some states and another line of vehicles for another set of states. It just won't happen. 
And before you go blaming any particular politicians, this was already going to happen regardless of what California and its following states are doing. So, if you live in Kentucky or anywhere else, here's what's coming. By the end of this decade, expect that if a new car, truck, or SUV has a gasoline engine, it'll be a plug-in hybrid and have at least a 50-mile all-electric range. This is a good thing, a major improvement over what's on the market now. Now, new EV brands are already out there like Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, Polestar, and more on the way. But most traditional vehicle brands have already stated they plan to be zero emission within 10 to 15 years, and most already have electric models available for sale. By the end of this decade, the used car market will be changing and evolving. There will be a giant sucking sound. You've heard that term before. That sucking sound will be of used internal combustion powered vehicles getting bought up and shipped to dealers in zero emission states to meet the new demand of buyers who refuse electric or plug-in hybrids. This likely means more expensive used cars everywhere as demand will no longer be local but national. Time will tell. Now, some might ask, how are people going to afford all these expensive plug-in hybrids and electric cars? Well, in California regulations, there are a number of subsidy programs and incentives to help soften the blow and the cost for low-income buyers. This is only a band-aid, however. In the medium term, this could be a turbulent time in the vehicle market nationwide as the demand shifts from one thing to another. The balloon will be squeezed here and it will be expanded over there. And there might even be an unexpected pop somewhere along the way. In the long term, though, cost of zero emission vehicles will eventually come down as technologies, manufacturing, and consumer adoption all progress, just as they did a century ago at the dawn of the motorized carriage itself. At the end of the day, folks, this is change. Change is happening. You can debate whether it's right or wrong or whose fault it is, but at the end of the day, it's happening. This is a done deal. So if you live in California, it's happening. If you live in the other 17 states that follow California, it's happening. If you live anywhere else, it might take a little bit longer, but it's happening. So get yourself one of these. They're not that expensive and uh, plug in. So there you go. Now we have a lot more news coverage around this particular topic in certain areas of the market. We're going to be doing a lot of deep dives into how it affects certain segments and how it's all going to work. You can see that playlist right there along with electric car reviews. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel right there and well, stay plugged in.